in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed The CCTV camera in many organizations is a strategy to ensure and insist that a level of maximum security be kept. Is that true? Yes. So the CCTV is a strategy and it functions to make sure that it captures the happenings around the vicinity to the end that all who come and go are protected. So God has made us strategies. Regardless where you find yourself, if you find yourself in politics, you are a strategy. That means your assignment starts when you identify what is wrong. Bad governance? Okay. In Africa, I am a strategy. Holy Spirit, there has to be a way. If you find out that economically speaking, people within a territory are not making progress. I am a strategy. And he comes to you as that strategy and says, in explaining you as a strategy, you are a kingdom financier. Walk with me and let me bless you so that you can establish amenities and give these people an opportunity to enjoy quality living. You are more than a kingdom financier. You are God's strategy to bring redemption. Moses was more than a prophet. Moses was the strategy that God used to bring an exodus of God's people. You know, as I talk like this, I remember the many visions. Let me share one of them with you. It is fresh to me today as it was many years ago. Never fades because it did not come from a human standpoint. I remember in that vision, I was in an elevated place and then I saw a whole generation of people. And in that vision, they were crying and saying no food and no water. I knew it was not just a group of people, it was a whole generation. And I felt very responsible and then I was talking with those who were in front, just like those seated in front. I said, who is the cause for this? And they pointed their hands unanimously at me and said, you are the reason why we are starving from lack of food and water. And I said to myself, I said, no, 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 I will not do this kind of evil against you. And then I made up my mind in that vision. I said, I am coming to rescue you. But then I remembered in that vision that it looked like some people had chased me into that place of confinement and I was just trying to hide like Gideon and I made up my mind with the courage of Esther I said if I perish I perish now watch this I opened that door the moment I opened the door to go down I just saw this giant looking gray bearded gray headed man very old with a bright garment giant man he smiled at me and he said give me your hands he said i will walk with you now i know it was the holy spirit you see he held my hand and he said i will walk with you very small me very insignificant me from that vision but being held by the hands of an ancient giant please help those under the anointing it never tires me to share this experience Listen carefully. The moment that happened, we were to jump from building to building, but there were small ladders that were connecting one building to building. I was too small to take that giant leap. So he jumped 
to the other side of the building and was waiting for me to climb slowly through the ladder to connect. And he just placed his hand and was smiling at me. And I was back to myself. What kind of a vision is this? Now I understand. I am a strategy. You must believe that about yourself. You are not just adding to the census, the number. If you, don't, if you don't have this mindset, you will live a defeated life. You will live an angry, jealous, defeated life of failure. You must know that you count. This is more than a motivation. God is counting on you. Don't say there are many people. There is a unique assignment to you as a strategy. Watch this now. Imagine with me for a moment that those who hold the keys to the doors here one person, have you been stranded in a meeting because one person did not do his duty? Have you seen people like that? Yeah. Imagine the crowds of people here, inside and outside, unable to access this facility simply because the man who was holding the padlock to the main gate fell asleep. And he just gets up and says, sorry, um, I've kept you people here for four hours. I really was asleep. That's how significant you can be. That means if you do not arise with the mindset of a strategy, if you're a man of God here, hear me. Don't say there are too many churches. No, there are those uniquely assigned to your grace. And if you fail because you think people are doing great things, if you fail, provided you are genuinely called. Most times men of God come to me, sincerely so, and they say, Apostle, well, you are the people who are doing ministry. We are here, you know, just a joke, but then an honest joke to express that we are not making progress. And I tell them something. I said, listen, if the whole world depended on Joshua Selman to supply the spiritual nourishment, the church will fail. Fail so woefully. Because there are many dimensions captured in this assignment that have not been given to me. And you must be unashamed to admit, accept and then celebrate the other investments that cut across the body. Wait for my teaching, the unity of faith. Hallelujah. Yes. Encounter with the body of Christ. So when you know this, you can encourage someone. He is playing this keyboard right now. The sound people are doing what they are doing. Everybody working to make this happen. I know that you give the credit to Joshua Selman because he's the face that you see. But behind this face, this strategy, there are other strategies that are making it happen. One more time, prophesy to yourself. Say, I am God's strategy. I think that's a better expression. Because if you say you are a strategy, um, your efficiency depends on who built you. We have fake products and we have real products. Fake products are products, but they are limited by the inexperience of those who produce them. Is that true? There is what we call original. And usually when people build an original product, they have some sort of seal of authenticity that they put on that product. I am God's strategy. If you are a politician, know this. I am God's strategy in politics. A businessman, I am God's strategy in business. You are a minister, I am God's strategy. Can I be honest with you? Every time I come for koinonia or travel for ministrations, many times um, it, it, it can be quite exhausting sometimes. But then I'm awakened by the fact that I am God's strategy. Privileged strategy for this meeting. When I come into a meeting and I sit down and I look at the people, I begin to get happy. Do you know why? Because all they need to do is to invite me upstage. Leave me and the devil, leave me and principalities, leave me and yokes and curses, leave me and ignorance, leave me and imbalance. I know what to do to them. Listen. Fire does not fear how many things are put on it. Mm -mm. You don't put wood and fire says it's too much. You just leave it for a while. Fire never says too much. Uh -uh. It sustains a unique ability. You can't catch it, yet everything physical submits to it. He makes his angels winds and his ministers flames. 
So when someone comes to me and says, Apostle, there is darkness around my life. There is spiritual ignorance. I'm losing my fire for the things of God. Another word, a summary to what you have said is, I need you as God's strategy to be used by God to step in. And with all pleasure, you are welcome. May God locate you in an area where your efficiency will be without struggle. Yeah. By, by this charge, let me wrap up this first part. By encouraging you, listen to me. The moment you find yourself struggling in an area, is proof that the grace is not there. Don't kill yourself and say, there are people who are not ministers of the gospel like preachers. Just admit it with all honesty and look for where there is grace for you. There are people who are not called into the prophetic. They have stretched themselves almost to death because they want to make sure they operate in the prophetic. There are people who are not apostles. It is not a, it is not a degradation. There are people who are, who are beautiful pastors. They are shepherds. They may not even be very effective teachers, but they are homely. They can bring everything together. When you find yourself operating in an area, how many of you have held a bunch of keys and they are all keys, but you use the wrong key for a door? Sometimes it can even enter the hole and not be able to turn. It looks exactly like the real key, except that it is not. I submit to you, therefore, that you must obtain grace from God to really know what area have I been assigned to? Some of you are intercessors, like Anna the prophetess, like Simeon the prophet. Find rest in that noble ministry and see it as noble as preaching before a crowd on a crusade ground. There are some of you who are kingdom financiers. You may never have the opportunity to minister as we are doing. But God has anointed you to be the strategy that ensures that the work of the kingdom never fails. Don't fail in that assignment. There are many kingdom financiers who left the work of kingdom financing to go to the pulpit simply because there seems to be some psychological attachment to being on the pulpit, especially when you are leading and heading the ministry. Psychologically speaking, you are generally considered. If I ask you to arrange people in the kingdom according to nobility of call, chances are that you will place people like us in front simply because of the supposed charismatism around our call. But you may be wrong. It will take God to arrange people according. Do you know the more God hides you, the more you are nobler. Look at it in the building of the human body. There are parts that you cannot see. Imagine if your heart was on your head. You would die when an angry person comes near you. He will hold that heart and squeeze it till you die. So God kept it and covered it with bones. Now you ignore the heart simply because it's not the hands and the fingers you are seeing. When your heart fails, let every other thing be alive. You will still die. Correct? So, I'm teaching you as kingdom people that the more you are exposed, doesn't mean you are not noble. Every call is a high calling. But let me tell you, when God intentionally hides you and makes you to play a background role, just know that he's protecting you jealously. It is a sign that you are truly noble. Some of the people who pray for me as a ministry you may never see them. They may never come on this pulpit. I met with a group of women um, a few weeks ago while I traveled to a particular region, and I was told that these women, very, about seven or so of them, very, very, you know, um, marvelously helped by God, accomplished women. And they said, Apostle, God gave us a mandate to pray for you. We are your intercessors by God. When I saw them, I was so broken. I said, How, what do I do to these people to let them know that I love and appreciate them? Now, when you see Joshua Selman doing well and doing exploits, you think he's just a product of his personal prayer life. Until the day we stand before Jesus, you will see how many people's prayer provided the leverage for us to rise to this level. 
and anybody, listen, let me teach you. The moment you are in a position of visibility, be wise enough to know that the invisible is what bets the visible. Are we together? Because our world is sensual and carnally minded. Chances are that you who is the one in the elevated position that is seen by everyone, usually if someone wants to sow a seed now, chances are that he will not give you the seed as my intercessor. It's me he will bring the seed to because he believes I am the one blessing him. But let me tell you, when God's reward system begins to spread around, he will pick you and honor you with the same gravity that he's honoring the preacher. There are people because of their efficiency as God's strategy, praying for men of God, for instance, praying for nations, you will find out that God will covenant with them that their whole family must have leaders. They may not be very educated, but you will never lack leaders in those families. It is God's covenant and his reward system. I hope that one time we'll have the opportunity to, to look at the subject of prophetic intercession. And I'm going to be teaching you the benefits and the blessings that follow an intercessor. But for now, it's sufficient for you to know that you are God's battle axe. Next time someone looks at you and says you are useless, a non-entity, either because some physical results that they expect to be there is not there, maybe like money, a car, a house, or some, some earthly parameters of defining success, Find solace in the fact that you are a strategy. Every key remains dormant until it gets to the door it was assigned to open. You can hold a key for a long time and think that key is useless. If that is the key that opens the restroom, when you are pressed, you will know how efficient that key is. If that is the key to the kitchen, when you are hungry, you will know how efficient that key is. So that God may not seem to be doing so much physically with you, it does not mean you are not part of that army. It does not mean, it's just that we have not gotten to the page of the story where your relevance is needed. Keep building yourself. Keep waiting, knowing that you are a strategy. Mary, you are a strategy. But if the angel has not announced the coming of Jesus, it will look like you are just an ordinary woman. Be patient. Elizabeth, if, if John the Baptist is not yet uh, ready to come, it will look like you are just some barren woman who married a prophet. I am God's strategy. Number two, what is the church? Is God speaking to someone? The church refers to the men and the women. So first, the church is a strategy. And then the second, the church refers to the men and women, the human vessels. The human vessels. That are number one, the host of heaven on earth and then number two the executors of God's purposes I will take it again the church refers to men and women that are number one the host h-o-s-t-s we are the ones who host God God will not go and dwell in some mountain somewhere he dwells in believers so the church refers to these human vessels that have sustained the ability to hold this treasure, heaven in us. And then the church also refers to the men and the women who are the executors of God's purposes. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 5. Let's hurry up. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 5. It says, Ye also as lively stones are built into are built up into a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ he calls us lively stones he says we are a spiritual house though human we are that temple that God resides he resides in me he lives in me 
The reason why you feel the presence of God on earth, the reason why you see him manifest on earth is because there are human vessels that have accepted to be hosts for him. And number two, there are human vessels that have accepted to be the executors of his purposes. Can I tell you this? Plans and purposes are vain until you find not only a strategy, you find the human vessels that are willing to execute it. i give you an instance. If you come up with a beautiful plan, even a beautiful strategy, say for building a structure like this, you will need someone who will carry that plan and translate it from what is written on paper to this material expression. The church, in addition to being a strategy, we are the executors of the will and the purposes of God. That means every time God wants to execute his will and his purposes, we are the ones he sends. Are we together? Romans chapter 12, please. Give us Romans chapter 12 and we'll start our reading from verse 4. Romans chapter 12 and verse 4. It says, For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, uh -huh. so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members of another. The church does not just refer to a strategy alone. The church also refer to a people a people the people God's chosen people the ones who become the principal executors of his will and his plan let me tell you what that means that everything God decides to do is executed on earth through the church here's how Jesus put it in his prayer he says when you pray ask the father that it be done in earth as it is in heaven. The earth there is not just talking about the physical land. The first earth is you. Let it be done in my life and then through my life as it is in heaven. That means when there are no human vessels, look up please. Did you know that every time there are no human vessels, even when there is a strategy for God's program, God's program becomes limited until he finds a man. Read your Bible and see how many times God's programs were delayed because there were no sufficient human vessels that were worked upon and trained to be the executors of his will. It took Moses a long time. God had a strategy to save his people from Egypt and to take them to a land flowing with milk and honey. But he needed a man and then from that man, he would mobilize a people. Same thing happened to Gideon. When they had come under the yoke of the Midianites, God found a man, Gideon. And from that man, he mobilized 32,000 people. And they were reduced to 300. And Gideon, alongside 300 men, brought victory for the nation of Israel. Can I tell you this? The church refer to men, not cheers. Cheers without men is not the church. A good sermon without the men to listen to it does not make the church. The church referred to the men and the women. Based on this definition, you see that this whole idea, now I say this respectfully, but this whole idea of refusing people from coming to the house of God to hear the word of God simply because uh, sometimes it's misunderstood to be just a passion to have crowd. No, no. The church refers to men and women. And if those men and women are not there to hear, to be changed, it means that the purposes of God will suffer because there would not be sufficient people to be executors of the same. Are we together? In gathering is your... your your kingdom responsibility to bring in more men to the fold so that they be trained, so that they be equipped and then they can be used by God. Without men, there is no church. 
Assume with me, for instance, that I come in here and there is absolutely nobody. Now I'm preaching and I'm talking. All I'm doing is just rehearsals or talking with the Holy Spirit. But as far as church is concerned, church happens when there is God and when there are men. It took God and Jacob to be called the house of God. Even heaven is not called the house of God. It took God and a man on earth. And Jacob said, surely this is the house of God, even though the gate of heaven. Can I tell you this? If you are a preacher here or you are a worker in church, you have a kingdom responsibility to see that in gathering never ceases with you. You have a kingdom responsibility, not through force and manipulation, but through revelation, that it is noble every time you bring people to the house of God, you give them an opportunity to experience the ministry of transformation, of building, of training. The more God finds men, the more his purposes can advance. Did you believe that? Yes, sir. The more genuine believers we have within our territory, the more the purposes of God can find expression. When there are few men who call upon the name of the Lord, when there are few men who sustain spiritual intelligence, it's going to be difficult to advance the purposes of God. So we have to continue to pray that in as much as God has blessed us as a ministry and as a global family, there are still many people who need to be part of this fold and we must continue to trust God that through the signs and wonders through the ministry of the Holy Spirit and through the responsibility of in gathering God is going to grant grace that his house be filled with men not just men who endorse the call of a man of God but men who can be trained can be equipped and can be efficient man of God if that is your motivation for in gathering fire on but if the motivation becomes a mundane pursuit just to bring some accreditation and add to the list of those who are making things happen it is not a pure motivation my motivation as a man of God has always and will ever remain to see that God brings as many people who need to be trained who need to be equipped and to be released to become um, this vast army that God will use for kingdom come. And this we will not fail to do in the name of Jesus Christ. So every time you say the church, you are referring to a spiritual strategy. The strategy that brings dominion over principalities and powers and sees to it that Jesus Christ is enthroned. When you say the church, it also refers to men. Without men, there is no church. I repeat, without men, there is no church. That means the extended meaning of this is that every time God sends men to church, we must obtain the grace to treat those men with honor, knowing that without men, there is no church. Now, it is not a license to come and trouble people in church and people just transfer the pain they've had from office and the pain they've had from other things and just punish the church to be... The, no, 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 no. That's not what I'm teaching. But I'm saying that if you know that the church refers to men, every time God sends those men, you are grateful and you serve them the meal of God's word principally and then make sure that within the time that they are under your influence, they feel the love, the warmth, the peace, the fellowship that befits those who are called by the name of the Lord. Herein lies my reservation about ignoring the relevance of men as far as making a church happen. Now, you know, people are subject to their whatever it is that they have uh, to say as far as kingdom come is concerned. But I will never be the man of God who will come here and downplay your relevance and downplay the fact that you are here. The reason why I am effective doing what I'm doing is because you are here. Can I tell you the truth? No matter how sound your call is, if God does not send the men to come and listen and be trained and submit to that teaching, you are not effective. 
for God so loved the world. When Jesus came, his entire attention was on men. Even when he resurrected, he went back to men to train those men to keep helping men. The church refers to men. Invest in excellence. Invest in media. Invest in quality sound. But not to the detriment of the men. That means if the church refers to men, the highest attention should not be given to speakers. The highest attention should not be given to aesthetics. The highest attention should not be given to some other non-human entity. The highest attention in any church should be to the men. And that means that the most important part of any church service, if I would use that expression, is the part that deals directly with men. The worship, the prayer, the word. Did you know that everything from opening prayers to the grace is about men? When you are praying, you are praying that God will make the service a blessing. The worship, the worship team is calling us together in worship to just press into God as we lay down our crowns and worship him. The testimonies are coming to encourage men and to become a blessing that people can believe. The word session, it comes as a system of building and edification for the men. Everything is about men. Man of God, when ministry becomes all about you, there is something wrong. When ministry becomes all about Joshua Selman, the alpha and the omega of the activities that happen there, you may be well-meaning, but something is wrong. True ministry is not about the man that God uses. There is a place for the honor that priesthood demands, but I'm telling you, the real assignment of a minister is to build men. If you hate those men, you can never truly build the people you hate. You can never, let me give you an advice. Again, if you're a man of God or you are involved around ministry, never be exalted too high that you lose touch with the men you are sent to because you will be aborting and even destroying your assignment. The reason why you are called is for the men. Without men, there is no church. We must sustain compassion. We must sustain the, the stamina to deal with men and to do so well. As many of you know, I've had quite a, a, a very serious schedule right from Wednesday. I've been traveling f over four states or so, and then this morning, and then right here. And sometimes people say, Apostle, you're stretching yourself too much and all of that. But when I remember that the church is not a building, when I remember that the church is not this pulpit, the church refers to men. The men that Jesus died for. The men that he so loved and loves. The men that he will use to birth his purposes. The men that become the principal conduit for kingdom come. I am motivated afresh to bend over backwards to see that those men are trained. I believe in excitement. I believe in joy. I believe in fun. I believe in gladness of heart but can I tell you we must trust God to restore the discipline of discipleship to make sure that every time we gather we do not waste the time of God's people are we together by the grace of God God will grant us grace that every time you come here everything that makes up the program is intended to be a blessing to you men it is all about men in as much as it is all about Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world. That was his motivation. The church is a spiritual strategy. The church refers to men and women. The vessels that he will use to birth his purposes. Number three, and this is the last point for tonight. The church also refers to an institution the only institution that is mandated to teach and mentor and build people in the ways of God. The church 
is an institution. Write it down, please. First Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15. The church also refers to an institution, not a spiritual institution, a physical institution. First Timothy chapter 3. The B part says, To behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God. The Bible calls it the pillar and the ground of truth. That means whenever you are looking for, there is a place in Abuja they call fish market. That means when you are looking for fish, where do you go to? You don't run to a bank. You don't run to a bank and meet the cashier and say, can I have tilapia or can I have a shark or can I have all of this? They will take you straight from there to the hospital. Is that true? Yeah. That means every time you are searching for a place where you can find truth, truth being Jesus, truth being doctrine, truth being the ethics that make for civil living and intentional living and visionary living, the church is that institution mandated with the responsibility of shaping culture correctly. The Bible calls it the pillar and the ground of truth. Are we learning now? It is based on this definition that our regular convergence as believers for church services, for midweek services become valid, provided that the things that are communicated within that institution are truths that number one, reveal Jesus. Number two, equip the believers. Number three, help in contributing to the moral, the spiritual, the economic stability of a region, the church. The church is not just a place for Christians. The church is a ground and a pillar of truth. Two more scriptures. Are you blessed? Hebrews chapter 10, please. We'll read verse 24 and 25. Hebrews chapter 10. The Bible says, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. 20, 25. It says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as ye see the day approaching. The Bible says, as an institution, do not neglect the assembling of ourselves together. Say after me, the church is an institution. Now, I know that sociologically we call it a religious institution. Well, from a secular standpoint, we agree. But from a kingdom standpoint, the church is not a religious institution. The church is a real institution. Are we together? Valuable to God, valuable for nation building, valuable. The church is the principal contributor for uh, as far as the, the um, moral correctness of a territory is any territory without the church will be a territory of lawlessness and mayhem and carelessness and indiscipline and lack of responsibility when you know this as a man of God and when you know this even as a state you will respect ministers not just as some religious by gods who are around indoctrinating people with uh, some kind of spiritual ideas no we are contributors to nation building because we are bringing principles that are applicable here and now even though spiritual in context but they have their applicability everywhere the church is an institution are we together next time you are you are listing the institutions that you have we have educational institutions that are mandated with the responsibility of making sure that secular education happens within a territory that people are academically enlightened we have all kinds of institutions we have the judiciary as an institution mandated with the responsibility of making sure that justice and fairness and equity is protected we have a political system as an institution mandated with the responsibility of leadership and governance. The church is an institution. Whenever you are confused about life, 
Whenever you are confused about purpose, whenever you are confused about destiny, whenever you need to find God, whenever the devil is oppressing you and buffeting your life left, right, and center, whenever you are, find, you are looking for a place where you find a family of like-minded people, the solution is the church. Can I tell you this? When you want to make good friends, come to the church. Ah, apostle, church? Yes, sir, church. Forget about your experience, the church. The church. There is no guarantee from scripture that God said, I will tabernacle in a bank. There is no guarantee from scripture that God said, I will tabernacle in a classroom. There is no guarantee from scripture that God said, where you gather in the law court, I am there. <clears throat> but God made a covenant with his house that his presence would jealously be represented in his house. So as an institution, the church is the principal avenue for learning the ways of God. The manual for the growth and the maturity of the believers in the church is the Bible in partnership with the Holy Spirit. If the Bible is administered outside of the leadership of the Holy Spirit, it just becomes a historic material. The Bible only comes alive when the ministry of the Holy Spirit is honored and then we are taught the ways of God, we are mentored and we are guided. Listen to me. Please hear me, believers. During the pandemic, Last year, sadly, when there was a lockdown for about three months or thereabout, do you know how many people's lives went down, spiritually and otherwise? Because there are people based on their background, they have no family anywhere. There are people who have lost father, listen to me, people who have lost mother, the only family they have literally is the church. Do we agree on that? There are people whose support, financial support, comes from the church. There are people today educated because they were part of the church. There are people who have found purpose and meaning to their lives because they were part of the church. You cannot tell how many people today who have found relevance in their lives only because they came to the church. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house. That is why the church is called the house of God. If you are looking for love, you will find it in the church. If you are looking for family, you will find it in the church. Apostle, but my biggest pain has come from the church. That is because the devil also came to the church. So we have to get him out of the church. He's not invited. There are people today when they lose loved ones, they have nobody to come and mourn with them but the church. There are people today when it's time for celebration, marriage, children, whatever it is, it is the church that comes to rally around them. There are people when they are in pains today, nobody can stand but the church. Never you ignore the church as an institution. The church is that one family. There are two kinds of families on earth. There is the physical family that is of biological origin, but there is the spiritual family. The spiritual family is a real family. If you are in church, you must have this family mentality. Coming to church is like coming home. The only place where God can accept you as you are while he's changing you. Can I tell you this? If you ignore the church, there are many things you will not be able to achieve. There are times that your fire can go down and then you come to the church and you sit down. You know, sitting and hearing the testimonies of these precious people and I'm wondering, what if there was no church? There was no church for three months and some people did not just backslide. They just went completely. It's like they. Do you know that Moses' absence for 90 days, you know what he came back and met? These were people who were calling upon Yahweh, 
Moses went up the mountain, not that he went to sleep. He went to meet God. He came back and found an idol that was made with the precious gold that God gave them. And they said, this be the God that brought us out of Egypt. Moses was angry. He made them grind that thing to powder and drink it. And God punished him because of it. You, you, you see how this thing works. He had to go and carve that rock by himself. Can I tell you this? I know that many of you have been wounded from church. I know many of you have had bitter experiences from church. But regardless what has happened, church still remains your zone of safety. Can I tell you this? I repeat, the church is the safest place. Everybody cannot be a devil. All you need is to find one person who loves you genuinely. One person who loves Jesus genuinely. One person who prays genuinely. And I can tell you there are enough people in every true church to communicate the love of Christ. <clears throat> Hallelujah. It is God's idea and it is his intention that every believer becomes part of a larger community of believers for the purpose of, you see, community living is the key to sustaining kingdom values. It's going to be difficult for you to excel in isolation. So when God picks you, he connects you to a larger body of believers. It is your assignment to connect indeed. This is the place of encounter. Do to me what you want. This is the place of surrender. This is the place where my life is changed let me tell you this by the privilege of leadership especially for many years and even now largely among young people i have learned the power of the church as an institution i have met people who have lost father lost mother and literally have had to depend on the church for everything that their physical family would give them. I have had the privilege, and I say this to the glory of the name of Jesus, of helping to raise people literally, some from primary school, secondary school, even university, the church. There are people today who would never go to school if they were not in church. There are people today who would never get a job if they were not in church. There are people today who would never find love if they were not in church. There are people today who would never even be able to bury their loved ones if they were not in church. There are people today who would never have been able to marry if they were not in church. There are people who would never be able to take care of their children if they were not in church. The church is not a disadvantage. Please find a way of, of believing this tonight. The church as an institution. There are people who hate anything church. And they bring all kinds of stories and all kinds of memories. They tell you the church is a place where there are corrupt people. There are politicians. There are devils there. Do you stop using the road because there was an accident there? That is the only road available. The church is a blessing. Jesus is the head of the church. If you don't trust the body, trust the head. Did you hear what I said? Let me repeat myself. If you don't trust the body, trust the head. The body may fail, but the head may never fail. He will never fail. The church is an institution. So as you gather week in, week out, here in Koinonia and all of the churches that are scattered, represented in the body of Christ, I want you to have this mindset. Whenever you pick your Bible, you pick your children, and you are on your way to church, remember this, that number one, 
the church is a spiritual strategy. Number two, I am that church. In addition to God's strategy, I am the host and then the executor of his will and his plans and his purposes. His purposes depend on me. He can do without me, but he has chosen to involve me in his program. So you don't go to church as a second class citizen. I'm not the one leading worship. I'm not the head of department. I am just a regular worker. Did you know sometimes people send me text messages and they say, Apostle, uh, good afternoon, sir. I am a regular or I'm just an ordinary koinonia member. And sometimes even when I don't want to reply, I'm tempted to reply, there are no ordinary members here. Everyone is the church. The nature of our work may seem to provide some level of elevated positions, but I tell you intrinsically, every single one, as far as Christ is concerned, we carry equal value, the value and the price being the blood of Jesus. Are we blessed? And I advocate this and I, I cry and call on men and women of God as much as possible Give honor to whom honor is due, but we must be careful so that we do not allow the broken and those who feel that they are no good come to church again and further feel miserable simply because you are not wearing a designer's, simply because you don't seem to speak very fluently. I made it as a personal commitment as a man of God that when it has to do with honor, I will communicate honor to all men and to those deserving of honor. But when it has to do with my disposition towards men, I will treat everybody with love and I will treat everybody with sincerity. If I'm giving a hug, I'm not going to hug you because you are rich or because you are holding an envelope and then hug another person and look at him and almost be asking, what are you doing here? No, no. It has never been my philosophy to treat people as far as my attention is concerned based on whatever it is. No, whoever your father is, whoever your mother is, whoever you are, Thank God for your pedigree. You would be given honor that is commensurate to your sacrifice. But as far as my mindset and my understanding is concerned, everybody who God brings to this place is a valuable and a special person. In truth, I may not be able to reach everybody. I wish I could. I really will. Sadly, I'm not able to do so. But I'm using this message tonight to talk to you and to talk to our global family that as far as Joshua Selman is concerned and Koinonia is concerned, there are no ordinary members. Everybody who was purchased with the blood of Jesus is a special and a unique person. Whether you sit inside, whether you sit outside. I remember during the graduation of the School of Ministry students, um, I was walking around, usually that's what I do because I'm not preaching. So I was walking around and I was almost going to look for a place to sit and all this, my security and protocol people, they would not let me rest. They were doing their job, you know, and I was standing and people were watching me as though it was Jesus Christ. And I said, come on, listen, listen, I'm a human being. My mother is alive. My father is alive. It is only the privilege of God's grace. I only sit here because of leadership, because of protocol, and because of the assignment. The day I'm not doing that assignment, I should be able to sit anywhere and feel comfortable. If I cannot do that, I'm only insecure. It has nothing to do with God. Because my value is not based on the position. My value is the revelation of who I am. Learn this. Are we together now? So if you find me seated somewhere up there and I sit in between two people and I'm listening to the word of God and say, wow, powerful, this is great. Chances are that you can even be uncomfortable there. <laughs> Believers, listen to me. I have an assignment to see that you are grounded in truth and that every time you say church, so for people who neglect the gathering of the believers and they say church is just in the heart. Correct them and say you are right but not completely right. There is something you only receive when believers are gathered together. Are we together now? 
that corporate gathering, Psalm 133, behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. The Bible says it is like the oil that comes upon the head of Aaron down to his beard, to his skirt, to his garment, and so on and so forth. It says there God had commanded the blessing. Hallelujah. Now there are two things we are going to do before we pray. Please rise everybody. I'm going to give you a little task in one minute. You're going to walk around to as many people as you can find in one minute. And even if it is to appreciate them and greet them and tell them we are the church. You are valuable. You are blessed. Bless them with all your heart. Don't waylay anybody. Go ahead. Make sure you're doing it inside and outside. Honor them and appreciate them sincerely. You don't have to know them. Together we are the body of Christ. Regardless what you believe, regardless what you don't believe, regardless what family you come from. It's a culture. Now please return back to your seat rejoicing. Hold hands together if you can. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let your love increase. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. The walls of pride and prejudice shall cease when we are your instrument listen to me let me encourage you never make it a culture never look down on anyone in terms of stratification, in terms of finances, in terms of spiritual exposure, in terms of enlightenment, the truth is we are not at the same level. Nevertheless, you should be comfortable to hug somebody whose father is some relegated thing somewhere. This is the church. They should be able to find that kind of love without explanation, love without reason. The moment you have a reason, it is no longer love. So someone comes to sit near you and you frown your face because you are all wrapped up in your designer. They say, turn to your neighbor and you just look at, don't you turn. No, 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 no. You may be saying no to the next 10 years of your life. Can I tell you this? There have been times before, you know, God made me a known face. There were times when people began to hear about me and what God was doing. But because the people had never seen me, they did not know this was the apostle. And, you know, it was not the best of experience. And then when they did find out that I was that man of God, they suddenly came back with some uh, hypocritical approach. And I said, no, no, no. The first you is the real you. That you that did not behave well is the real you. So make it a point of duty. The first core value in this ministry is love, not power, love. Everything is motivated by love. Are we together now? Yes. That when they share the grace, you don't just stand up and carry your children and you push everybody and go out. No. Hello, good morning. Good afternoon. You are going to walk after the service. Oh, God bless you. 
This is very important. You may think this is just some childish Christian thing, but you may be healing. Someone right now may be listening to me. And finally, people are looking for a home more than a sermon. People are looking for a home. You can listen to a sermon online. You cannot find a home online. There is a difference between listening to teachings online and being in the presence of God here. A place of genuine laughter and love. No pretense. Are we together? It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. Some of you, if you had, if you had your way, you would reject that part of the song. I don't need it to serve. You do, you do. Come to terms with it. Listen, God is not ashamed to declare how vulnerable he is towards us. I need you to be an effective preacher. No matter how anointed I am, your coming here, among the many things that it does, is it validates the fact that we are a blessing. There is nothing to tell lies about. There is nothing to be ashamed about. You see, when people know you are sincere, they will love you truly. But when you are playing games and doing all of these things, the people would let you know they are not stupid. When people come here and there is room for interpretation, maybe the miracle service, the moment I discern they are struggling to speak English, I tell them, say any language. Be comfortable. I'm not going to respect and honor you just because you are speaking Polish Queen's English. That is an advantage, but not the basis for the love. Provided you name the name of Christ, you deserve to be loved. I pray tonight that this teaching will help to build our understanding and make us very, very matured believers. We're going to pray. Our time is gone. Prayer point number one. Lord, help me to be effective as your battle axe, as the man that you will use in this season. Please, we're praying. And then number three, as part of this institution called the church, lift your voice and pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. I am your battle axe. Use me for your glory. In whatever way you see, and however you please. Go ahead and pray. I will go. I will go. Everywhere you lead me. I will go. I will go. I will go. Wherever you lead me, I will go. I will go. I will go. I am your battle axe to whatever nation, to whatever region, whatever the responsibility is. My soul says yes, says yes says yes my soul says yes someone is praying lord i am that available battle axe sharpen me and make me ready to be used especially in this time Lord, if you're healing someone in this nation, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, if you're lifting someone in this city, please don't do it without me. We are praying, don't be tired. Whoever you want to lift, Lord, you can lift 
through me whoever you want to bless lord you can bless through me whatever you want to say lord you can say through me whatever you want to do lord you can do listen whoever you want to heal lord you can heal Whoever you want to change, Lord, you can change. Very powerful song. I'm available. Use me for the change. Use me for the healing. Let me not be the one causing the pain, but bringing the healing. Whoever you want to bless, whoever you want to save, whoever you want to transform, oh God, I'm here as your church. Find comfort in using me. Hallelujah. The last prayer point and we're done. Please hear me. We must pray first for koinonia and then for every church as a local assembly and every platform that provides the gathering of believers. Can I tell you, we cannot lose the church as an institution. Westernization should not be the reason why we lose the gathering of the saints. There is a blessing. The church is a platform for mentorship that builds, that trains, that equips. It is the place where people can find God. The church is a city of refuge. The church is akin to the ark of Noah. When rain was about to fall, they found a place of safety. Are we together? This is your house. Your home. We welcome you. Lord, we welcome you. This is your house, your home. We welcome you today. Last prayer point. The grace to be an active part of this institution called the church. Lift your voice and pray. Active through in gathering. Active as a worker. Active. As, an, as a participant, not a fan. There are no fans in the church. There are active people praying, serving, bringing souls, providing financial resources. Lord, whatever role I have to play to keep this institution that is the pillar and the ground of truth alive, I obtain grace. Go ahead to pray. Pray for every local assembly you know. Lord, keep them. Keep that institution. Keep the building from being idolized. But let it become a center for transformation. A center for salvation. A center for encounters. The house of God. It is only in the house that God has commanded the blessing. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations in your family. May his favor be upon you 
in a thousand generation receive it as a blessing that's what you get when you come to church may his favor be upon you in a thousand generation in your family Amen. 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 Hey, Balako Shabrande, get the Balako Siadabada. Father. We pray that Koinonia will remain a place of encounters. We pray that Koinonia will remain a place of revelation. We pray that Koinonia will remain a place of transformation. We pray that Koinonia will remain the house of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we declare from tonight's teaching that we are willing to be sharpened battle axes that you will use to beat down the gates of darkness. Lord, we declare that we are the men and women you have found worthy to become hosts of your presence and advancers of your purposes. And Lord, we thank you for this family, Koinonia. We thank you for every church and every ministry represented in the body of Christ. Oh God, strengthen the bond of fellowship. Amen. Bring unity over your body. Amen. Let all the walls of the divides, the prejudices, and all the things that divide us and weaken our strength, I pray, oh God, that they will fade in light of what you are doing. But as for this ministry, I pray that you will increase our bond of love. You will increase our bond of fellowship. That in truth, we will love one another without discrimination. We will love one another without favoritism. We will love one another in spite of our different levels of stratification. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we commit ourselves to love one another. We commit ourselves to loving you. And we pray that in and through our lives, Jesus will be revealed. Amen. We pray by extension, O oh God, committing our global family scattered across all the nations of the earth. In the name of Jesus, we pray that that bond of unity and that bond of love will rest upon every one of us. Amen. We pray for the teachings the principal channel that you have used to extend your blessing through us to the nations. Lord, anoint those teachings afresh. May they go across the length and the breadth of this nation and across the globe. May they bring salvation. May they bring healing. May they bring liftings in the name of Jesus Christ. And as for you, because you came to church tonight, I decree, may the Lord bless you. I decree, may the Lord prosper you. I decree, may the Lord reveal himself to you. I decree that everything that has mocked God concerning your life, as a result of your coming tonight, I prophesy and I declare that it ceases from happening in your life. I sense in my spirit that there are people who whilst they heard this our brothers and sisters sharing their testimony of financial miracles, their hearts were just open and they said, oh, that God would step in for me. The prophetic dimension to activating wealth, like I've always thought, is not a license for laziness. But there are times when you are in the sea. There are times when your net is good. There are times when your fishing skill is there, but you will still not catch fish. At that point, you do not need fishing skill. You need Jesus. And for those who have exhausted all that they know to do, and it looks like financial doors are not opening, I prophesy to you, in the name that is above all names, return with strange miracles.
Please just help those under the anointing. Everyone here who is sick in his body, the devil has taken advantage of you, not the church. The church is a place where we separate light from darkness. I decree and declare that everything that represents darkness in your life, let it be far from your life now. And everything glorious in your life that you have lost, for, the, for people here, there are people, the proverb, Ichabod, seems to be the proverb around your life. I declare, may that proverb never be heard around your life again. Every business here, hear the word of the Lord. I decree and declare, the grace to excel, let it come upon you. Every dormant gift that is lying down within you, I decree and declare that gift is activated. And all those who can discern and reward that gift, I call them to pay attention to you. Hear me? If there is anyone here whose spiritual life is going down, prayer life going down, your passion for God going down, don't feel condemned and don't feel like there is no hope for you. This is the church, the place where you find hope. Therefore, I decree and declare fresh fire upon your spiritual life. For everyone here who has been bereaved and is in and through any kind of emotional pain, we decree and declare, let the healer bring healing right now. And we stand here prophetically and we lend our voices together with many who are praying over Nigeria, over Africa, over Abuja. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ that the purposes of God will be established in our land. In the name of Jesus. And every controlling power over this territory, the territory of the FCT, the nation of Nigeria, the continent of Africa, we lend our voices as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. As a united force, we decree and declare, like Dagon fell before the ark, we declare that every altar that does not project Jesus, let it fall before the ark of his presence. In the name of Jesus, the Lord bless you. The Lord honor you. In Jesus' name. Please, everyone, remain standing. Let me plead with us. Just give me two minutes. Let's be disciplined. Two minutes. Let me make the altar call. Please, no moving around. Just two minutes and we're done. There are people here. God has given you an opportunity to hear this word tonight. You came from various places. Please, let's minimize movement. It's, it's a culture. Listen, you have to train yourself in the house of God. Patience for two, three minutes will not stop you from doing what you're doing as much as possible. Whenever the altar call is coming, except otherwise, let's just discipline ourselves to receive them and then we'll wrap up. There are people here across the balcony, here in the main auditorium, all the overflows and following online. You are saying, Apostle, I've heard you teach and I want to become part of the church. The church is not just men, men who are in Christ, men who have accepted the free gift of salvation. Two categories of people I want to call quickly. Number one, those who are saying, I need Jesus as a matter of life and death. Number two, those who are saying, Apostle, my life has gone haywire. I need restoration to my Christian experience. If you belong to any of these two categories, I'm going to count one to five. Please, very quickly, I'd like you to rush and come and stand. Be very bold. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. God bless you. Let's celebrate them as they come. Who is this King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, Amen. Who is this King of glory, keep coming, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, keep coming, Amen. for thine is the power and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. For thy the power forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, before I pray for all those who have come to give their heart to Jesus, let me just make one very important announcement. Please let me have your attention. By God's grace, our medical team um, is embarking on an outreach to one of the IDPs here in, Kadu in, in uh, I was going to say Kaduna, in Abuja. Praise the name of the Lord. Are you happy? Celebrate Jesus. Amen. Um, can I have Dr. Chai please come? He's the head of the medical team. Please quickly just come. Now, the medical team is searching for volunteers. Volunteers who will participate in the medical outreach. Particularly, they are looking for doctors, nurses, lab scientists, and pharmacists. All interested persons, please, if you are interested in being part of this outreach, is a noble cause. When is it? The date? 4th of December. So we have just on Saturday, on the 4th of December, you're a paramedic, you're a medical person, and you feel that this is an opportunity, you want to be part of it, please, immediately after the service, he's going to be standing right here. You can come and meet him and say, I want to be part of it. And probably you want to just come in and support them in whatever way. We have taken responsibility as a ministry, but then we're also going to open up doors should you want to do anything without coercion, by revelation, from a heart of love, please feel free to do it. And so this is what test running our humanitarian services. So the medical team is leading on this and we want to see that we're able to bless the people and to bless God's people. There are so many people at that IDP camp and we want to just supply food, medicals and see how probably we sink a borehole or two or just do something for the community. God is granting us grace in the name of Jesus Christ. So please, immediately after the service, you want to be part of this uh, as a volunteer, please do well to see doctor. He'll be waiting there. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. I celebrate every one of you for coming. Thank you so much for making this bold decision. Please lift your right hand high above your head and I want you to pray this prayer. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I believe in you, that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Tonight, I have heard your word. I receive eternal life into my spirit. And I declare that you are my savior, you are my Lord, and you are my king. I decree and declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From today, I live a victorious Christian life, serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious people. We love them so. They have come before you making their declaration to start a new life in Christ. I pray by the authority of Scripture that their sins are forgiven, and I decree and declare that you enjoy the ministry of the Word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you in Jesus' name. Thank you and congratulations. May I request that you just move to my right. There are a few counselors who will just attend to you within a minute or two and you'll be back to your seat. God bless you. Let's celebrate them as they go. Let's celebrate them very quickly. Hallelujah. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.